Hi all, welcome to another Chess24 Banter Blitz. It's approaching 11.30. So I hope you've all been keeping safe, having a good week. Okay. Uh, before we get into the games, check out this 15% voucher code, King's Crusher. So if you go to Chess24 slash premium uh, and you put this voucher code, King's Crusher, you get 15% off. So yeah, get all the perks, get to play Magnus Carlsen, the world chess champion, other grandmasters, international masters, celebrities, and other major perks of becoming a premium member and supporting, you know, the absolutely best online site going. Yeah, so there you are. Premium membership, 15% off. Okay, let's go into the games now. Challenges today. Always blame the mouse. Okay, I'll play uh, E4, I think. So, hi there. Always blame the mouse. Uh, so, okay, we got a game. I'll try uh, Smith Smith Morrow Gambit. So this has been quite a reliable weapon of choice against the Sicilian defense. This gambit, I think it's one of the more respectable chess gambits going. I also have this book called Mayhem in the Mora by Esmond. And I've got to play Esmond actually a few times in Blitz and Bullet. He's an absolutely lethal tactician and great positioning of course, but the tactics are also what he sees in an instant is quite remarkable. I think the Smith Moral Gambit might have uh, sharpened his tactics but anyway uh so yeah and he's drawn with vichy anand i think i mentioned that in one of the gibraltar tournaments with the smith mora in that's a long time control so uh, it can't be that bad as gambits go in case you're wondering about the soundness in case you're going to do some research on it uh so okay so here bishop g5 i'm gonna try and edge a little bit <laughs> closer to the screen now. I don't know if this is apparent, okay, to you guys. But yeah, I'm gonna try and edge a little bit closer. And um, I think Bishop G5, maybe Queen E2, and uh, you know what? I've I've misplayed this. <laughs> I've just realised the the rook should be on D1. I've misplayed this. Yeah, I usually put the rook on d1 because he got the imminent threat of e5. Yeah, yeah, I've misplayed it. It's a bit too casual. Oh, well, I, I'm going to waste the tempo and just put it there now. So it's as if e5 sh is a concern for that. Right, let's put this bishop back for a moment because it's hitting it. So I think bishop g3 to probe d6. It's an interesting move, Queen A5. It really is an interesting move. Um, but Bishop G3, Knight E5, things could get tricky for me. On E5, there might be Bishop G4. So on E5, you know, H3 sometimes is an idea to stop Bishop G4. Okay, I'm still looking forward to Bishop G3. I would hope that's a reasonable move here. I don't really see much of an advantage at the moment of e5. It just seems to just simplify the position. My e4 is vulnerable. Maybe I should try and discourage uh, b4. Yeah. Yes, it's not that impressive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit stuck. This is a stuck sort of move. I'm not convinced about anything here at the moment. The thing is, he can play b4 and put pressure on e4 soon. 
if he wanted. Okay, or he could take out this bishop. Let's see if there's any uh, upside hand to this. Is knight d4 any good? At least there's less pressure on e4. I wouldn't say this is amazing. Oh, there's knight e6 here, though. Yes, there's a tactic, isn't there? Uh, but it's probably better prepared with f4 than knight e6. Well, it weakens the diagonal, but it's a risk I'm going to have to take. So let's imagine the check. Well, I don't have to imagine the check. I'll just go here. I think unless this diagonal with b4 and bishop a6 later. Mind you, any b4, there's knight a4. I don't know if he gets this, you know, diagonal. On the other hand, here it looks a little bit dangerous as well. King h2. But I might just see ghosts here because I don't know how we might get a rook quickly necessarily over there. So I don't know actually. Maybe just maybe just Queen F two. Hang on a sec. Just Queen F two. Isn't that less controversial than anything else? Just in case he gets some mating attack or something. Alright. Okay, so uh okay here. Knight d4. He's always got b4 coming. Knight d4. He's got b4. There's knight d5 to shield e4. So I think I have taken the chunk out there. Fairly non controversially. Oh, there's knight c6 if he allows it. But this is going to be a rock and pawn ending. So I think maybe he's banking on this being okay. Hmm, I suppose it looks as though it could be okay. Ah, yes. Is there any way to actually try and get an advantage here? This pawn holds these two, so I'm gonna. I don't mind losing that one and getting a rook to e7, because I think this one holds those two. I think the key one's probably this one. It's nothing much, is it? My my any advantage is really minimised. I don't think there's any advantage actually. Uh, this is a bit fluffed. What would be an attempt at a winning plan? <laughs> is there any attempt at a winning plan? Oh, that's no, I'm I'm losing. Oh no, I'm losing. Okay, I'll just try and get the king. I was surprised he didn't go for b4 immediately. He's given my king a little bit of activity. So, yeah, he didn't need to get my king slightly active, threatening. Okay, I ain't mating. Um. Okay, if I go for f6, there might be something, a little bit of something. I'm threatening to chat, mate. Um, this form pawn in the ending, I think it's possibly. A bit passive for him. I should have really, I think I should have taken out this pawn actually when I had the chance with my king. Oh, this is another route in 
to his position that H file if needed. I can shake out a pawn, I think. Oh, or not. No, I'm just two pawns down. Yes, what a disaster. <laughs> ah, what a, what a what a game. Oh, it's only swindle now. Two pawns down. Why don't I just take that? Okay. Well, this is tricky. The way he's doing this. Accidents do happen. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I can't resist. It's it's it looked tricky to me actually. The king's placement there. It did actually look tricky when you've only got like. This is not what you see the professionals play when when the professionals play blitz. In the field, they've got like ten second increment per move. Uh, you know, this is not exactly the blitz you see on the professionals, but by the way, this this is really uh, an extreme form of blitz, actually. It really is. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, blunders can massively creep in. Um, but it suits this format to be able to play quite a few games. But it is it is a brutal form of blitz, this. I, I, I thought, given the time constraints, it was a little bit tricky there. So, it's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> okay, okay, uh, okay, okay. Um, I don't know, try and blast this bishop or not. Or d4 because I think he's going to like kill my bishop here. But I need b6 now, and then this diagonal is a disaster. Uh, so if I if I had any idea of b6, it's, it's sort of mostly extinguished at the moment. Okay, okay that that pawn is also fragile. I wonder. Yes, he's killed my bishop. What have I done to him to kill my bishop on on? On here, oh no, <laughs> Bishop takes, and there's no escape for the bishop ever. Of the bishop takes, I need to try and play c6 and bishop b8. This, this would be a disaster for this guy. I, yeah, if you can see the double pawns, the bishop would never get out because the double pawns it would be rather sick. Actually, rather sick as sick goes. So at least I just want to make sure this bishop's not completely dead. You would never catch Bobby Fisher with a terrible bishop, as the Russians say. So the bishop actually at least is alive, a little bit alive. Okay, so that's one good thing. Bishop g4, bishop h3. All right, this this looks very dodgy. Indeed, this looks extremely dodgy. Indeed, okay. I'm taking this guy out. But again, I haven't really got much to play with here, have I? I can try and get this bishop to this diagonal, and it would have bishop e3, and I can try and undermine with b6. I guess he hasn't got an imminent killer strategic pawn break. If if we look at his pawn breaks, I don't think he's you know b5. Okay, maybe there. I'm not doing anything with this this stuff over here. My rooks are not connected. I think I'm going to sort of as if b6 might be uh, something. 
B6. Is it? Or is it not? Or is it just leading him into trouble? If I exchanged off dark square bishops, a knight could go into E3. The problem with the B6 plan, he's just going to torch me on C6. So I'd rather put my bishop on H6 and then go for knight E3. Any H3 the G file. I think this is an interesting, you know, relatively safe long term plan. Swamp off the dark square bishops, put a knight into E3. Yeah, I'm ruling out this plan A, plan B. I'm, I'm ruling out that. I, I just want to put the bishop. I want to exchange off the bishops. And this looks as though I'm, I'm doing zero, doesn't it? I mean, that's the beauty of this. Having. What's that expression? Having a bad plan is better than no plan. I have got a plan. It's fundamentally flawed at the moment because of this queen h5. So I just need to sort of somehow make it that queen h5 is not on as well. How on earth is that? I would need to connect the rooks actually. If I just put the king over here, I would need to actually to connect the rooks to be able to play bishop h6. Once I can play bishop h6, okay. Let's just put the king over here. Unless he's playing for b5, this could be dangerous. Well, actually, there was bishop h6 there. Okay. It's getting a little bit dangerous. Uh, okay. In its own right over here. Yeah, so that b5 break. If it occurs to my opponent about a4 and b5, mind you, a4 is about to trap his queen. Let's just put it there for a moment, cheeky. a4, bishop d8 just wins the queen in broad daylight. Change of plan here. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. So I've either got a positional plan or a tra tactical trap on this side of the board. A positional plan or a tactical trap. Can I? Is it at all possible to do both? Maybe Queen C7. If he's going to do this dance, I'm going to play Queen C7 to stop A4 and B5. Right, so a4 and b5 is a long way off. So exchange off the dark square bishop, get into e3. Right. If he plays h3, then plan c, g, g3 would be slightly vulnerable. He can't take that at the moment because of my rook. So is he really going to allow knight g4 to eat yet? Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's my point. g3 is compromised. Right. So now, to, can I afford to get the queen in over here? Is it too slow? He's looking at my h6 knight. That's kind of annoying. This gaze at the knight. I assume if he's not interested in a4 b5, if uh, any any queen g8 has got rook g1. Oh, so I wonder another plan. I can get the knight to c3 via b5. The king would have to be over here. This is rather long-winded. Uh, knight over here to c3, and he plays a4. The king needs to be over there. This I don't know why I'm being so ridiculous with the plans today. But I can't see anything really easy. All right, so the king should be away from the a4, b5. In fact, can I do that anyway? Prophylaxis against b5. So he plays a4. I commit him to a4. All right, I need my king over here. I need the king over here. Uh oh, this is trouble anyway. Is it? C takes and knight takes. Oh, as rook takes, he's going to win the rook. Yeah, I've just gone straight into trouble. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the rooks need to be connected. No, no, he had B five. He had B five. <laughs> the rook attack. He had B five. No. Do I need to worry about even Queen H6 here? Out of interest. 
All right, okay. All right, forget it. All I've done is is encourage them to play a4. That's all I've done here. Okay, there's another idea to get the queens off. This is rather pathetic. Okay, I don't know. Get the queens off. Rook g5. Encourage knight f3. That's another pointless thing. Does the knight want to be on a7 here? Just for a moment, just in case this b5. You have, I mean, it looks good at any point. That looks good, yeah. Okay, I'm going to put my queen as a battery over here. Treble battery. It's more impressive than it actually does anything. Right. Queen e3 plan. If I have a queen e3 plan, how on earth I pile up on... I'll need to pile up on d3 after. I'll get ready for that. Right. And this knight is not well placed for that. No, I, I okay. it's I don't know. Okay, thanks. Uh, there were plans, but they were way off. I, anything way off. I think he had B five winning as well. Actually, when my rook was hanging, uh, not hanging. Yeah. Anyway, another not very convincing game today. Okay, King's Engine. This, um, you know, there's e threes is interesting. This runaway e three, I've been analysing something like this recently. This runaway kind of pawn sack, I think, could be interesting if if he gets def defensive, too defensive, he could end up compromising the e five square. If it's too defensive, by like f takes an e four. I've seen a similar position a few days back and I think one of the Magnus Carlsen's games. Um so F takes rookie eight. Alright, so this this is um intriguing because well, maybe it's not that intriguing. Well, you know, Queen D four, Queen F six and Queen A one if it does Queen D four for Queen G four. If it takes Queen D four, Queen F six, Queen D four, Queen A one. That'll be trouble. Queen D four, Queen F six. On the other hand, uh, you know, Knight E three, Queen D four, Queen F six, Queen E three, Queen A one. Um, on the other hand, safer I think is Queen F six immediately here. On the other hand, Knight D four. So. Do I actually play knight e3, queen d4, queen f6, queen e3, queen a1, knight c3, queen b2, rook b1, queen a3? Is, it, is this something easier? Look at this, queen f6 again, knight d4. Okay, uh, I don't like indulging all this necessarily. It's actually, it's not really a great tactic because he gets out of that fork anyway. So if I'm if I'm going to play a tactic, I think Queen F6 is better. If Knight D4, there's Queen E5, just getting onto that E3 square. Knight E5, I mean it's it's an awkward looking move, Knight D4 anyway. I mean, does he want to play knight d4? Does he want to play queen queen d4? Uh, 
And the thing is, you know, if he plays queen d4, I just taken a knight c2. This looks rather tasty because there's, well, knight c2 coming. No, he stops that. Okay. Our plan is just to take out the bishop and try and use the light square bishop. I think I would rather do that. So c5, b6, bishop, b7. Although this doesn't seem why have I just given him a pawn? Have I just given him a pawn for nothing? All right, there's Bishop F3 threatens it. Mind you, this is a stupid self pin. He just unpins. If I take on F3, this all seems rather daft and pointless. Again. Um <laughs> I take out the knight or not. I don't know. It's I don't know if B five is anything. Is B five anything? Rather defensive, isn't it? His king's coming in as well. His king's coming in on light squares. I think I'd rather have a rook on here to shield the sixth rank. Rook b7, rook c6. If king e4, you know, rook e6, and on e2. I think rook c8 for rook. If, if rook d6, um, then that's. Problem in there. But anything else is too defensive because this is just asking for a king of infiltration. So I think I have to at least encourage rook d6 before his king comes in. I, I wonder if, yes, yeah. Okay. A five A four might be interesting. Like bringing the king over here. It seems somehow intuitively a little bit better this situation because he's played that E four somehow seems a little bit better. Because the king infiltration, mind you, that yes, I have to get B three, I think, before it's too late. If I get B three, I weaken C four and A four. If I take this guy out, undermining the pawn chain. So uh, yeah, okay, there. Yes, that's putting me slightly better if he's having a hesitation there. Is it? Maybe not. It's kind of, I think it's got me in a vice. Miami vice. It's got me in a vice. Can't really. Why has he allowed me rook? D three C He can win this pawn and try for his pawns. I think I've got to take out A four. 
All right, so I got this guy. My king's a, a few squares away from e4. If I take out c4 or a4, both. That's a problem. Those tools pawns are good. Just stress relief. Sorry, sorry. It could have gone either way. What? <laughs> oh, that was a horrible vice grip in that end game. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. I was trying to apply the Tarash rule. Getting behind. Oh. <laughs> no. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Luck there. Luck. It's anything. It's like a lottery. That was lottery rook. Pawn ending. I mean, I knew I'd have the connected pass pawns. If I take both of them out, get the connected pass pawns. <sighs> Diet Coke time. I think I just want to sacrifice a rook and castle queen side and then queen h2 and then maybe f4 f3 and then queen h1 mating I mean that's the plan okay oh there's bishop g5 here let's just stop maybe a bishop sack instead less expensive way of doing things G5 takes, takes, takes. I'll go with G5 for a moment. C 
C6. There's a check, there's a 94. Queen D7, Queen H7. Queen D7, Queen H7. E3 for bishop f2. That's interesting. E3. Actually, there's bishop h2 thereafter. <sighs> E3 looks like a, a thing. Let's play this. E three for bishop h two. Yeah, so if it takes check and then um, king f two there. Hmm. I think queen e7 to h7. Hmm. I suspect I want to get these pieces involved. Potentially, if the worst happens, I want to get these guys involved. I imagine, okay, e6, queen h7. If f takes queen h7, it seems queen h7 is something. Queen d5, queen h7. There's no major check here, is there? Well, I, want, I think I want bishop e6, actually. If queen b5, c6. I can get this rook involved. I think bishop e6. Uh, okay, queen. he's got queen b7, though. Uh, then I, I would have um, king f7 for bishop b3 for queen c5. That looks lethal on that diagonal. If I ever had queen c5, it looks lethal. In fact, you know, bishop takes b3 here. Offering the rook, king f7. He takes this rook, and then, you know, queen c5, and he's got king h1. It's not good. So if I want to play that, I think my rook needs to stay on h1. So uh, he's also, he just plays knight d4. Next. Does, does he just play knight d If he plays, okay, knight d4, there's rook b8 for rook b2. Okay, this this move. I'm maybe I'm threatening. Some, you know, sometimes I'm threatening. Bishop takes. If he plays knight d4, maybe there's rook b8 for rook b2. Right, okay, f4 here. Although, yeah. Am I am I going to find a way? To lose this horribly at this moment. Why not, why not just take out this knight with the rook to facilitate queen c5? Is that too hard to do? Because the bishop's needed for f5. Why can't I just do rook b8, rook b3, queen c5? Is oh, so it's queen c6. He's got queen c6. Now he's got e3 anyway. This rook b3 doesn't work because there's e3. Okay, can I just do this for a moment? 
Mm, take out the guy. Okay. <sighs> Maybe stop the king from going over there to threaten bishop g3. Is that mating? Okay. If I take and then, you know, bishop g3 is mate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got a bit tactical. Uh, okay. Uh, Friedel. <clears throat> Hi there. I'm going to try and play Queen's Engine. It wasn't entirely, entirely terrible against the London system for a bit of variety. I thought I don't necessarily need to play d5 in fact can I be cheeky with f5 I'm trying to spice things up here for entertainment purposes uh, but I think there is a threat of f4. Uh, d6 coming up. f4, and I've got d6. If c4, knight b4, I'm still threatening d6. f4, unless he's got something on h7. Well, imagine like f4, queen c2, d6, bishop h7, king h8. Oh, hang on. It's got queen g6. I take plays queen h5. In that position, I would have knight f4. Yeah, knight f4 would be possible. So any bishop g6, knight takes. Okay. So just to run that through again, maybe it's all ridiculous, but f4, queen c2, d6, bishop h7, king h8, queen g6, threatening mate, d takes, queen h5, threatening, classic mate. Knight f4. Uh, that's the plan. Okay, I'll stick with it. <clears throat> oh, after all that. <sighs> what a waste of calculation. <laughs> Why do I bother calculating anything? Oh, oh man. Why do I bother? I've just wasted that energy, is never going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but he's, I don't know, he's disconnected here. Uh, is he? He's back. Okay. Um, B5. Okay, my, my, this diagonal is still vulnerable. G5. And then I'm thinking rook F7 to G7. Is this crazy stuff or what? Rook F7 to G7. Is it too many weak? What if I try and shield some of these weaknesses with Bishop G7? Yes. Rook G7? We've got knight g4 coming up. Knight g4, bishop e7. Old hope. Oh, he's got knight h6 coming up as well. Oh. Uh, well, there's, I suppose there's king f8. What about queen e8? That loses immediately. Bishop e8, knight h6. Right, for a moment, I think I'm going to play b5. Just to stop c4. I, maybe this isn't the ideal situation at all. I've just created loads of weaknesses. Okay, uh, okay I'm inviting uh, I think horrible things. <laughs> uh, okay. Too horrible to even say. Ah, uh, 
but maybe I've got Knight F6 on the cards. Might push my luck with these pawn moves. That's one of the things I didn't like. But maybe this is okay. If I have Queen E8, can I vec these attacking pieces with Queen E8? Mm. Oh, crikey, isn't there Queen uh, G6 on Queen G4? If that is not losing, it might actually be useful to hit this knight on H6. Aha. Uh -huh. Hold on, hold on. There's knight. That should be okay. If I get tempo, it's less scary to get the tempo. Because I don't know what evil thing he's got in mind. Um, D5. If they D5 round here. Yeah. Is that really dumb? D5? I'm going to lose on time in this game. At this rate, oh, I don't know. The knight on e4 looks too good. So I'm a minute down. Okay, he hasn't immediately got. Okay, what about what about if I just played knight takes d5 to get this knight back to civilization in the center, rather than e d? Just get the knight back. He hasn't got entry on c7 yet or c8. The knight's a nice blockade square, knight. Okay. Maybe I should take that out of the equation. Can I just about do this? There's no rook d5 just yet. Oh, there's knight f5. Okay. Oh, this is precarious. Oh, crikey. Okay. Go for G four, try and spice things up even more. Is there something to do with G two or the H file here uh, of interest? If I could somehow double rooks on the H file, that would be a dream. Can I do this? Double rooks. If there's rook c8. Oh. Okay, that's. Oh, that's not a worry. Is it? I just double my rooks. Yeah, the dream's coming true at this rate. No, I don't. Hang on. <clears throat> can't double the rooks here. Also that knight's kind of nearly stranded. This isn't looking good necessarily. Um, oh, okay. B4 knight c3. He had h7 covered anyway. Well this looks better anyway because of b4. It's a play, it looks like a playable position. The king's restricted. B4 and rook d7 look like it looks like a playable position. Or well, knight e3 it looks very good. This form pawn looks dangerous. Yeah, friends, mate.
Yeah, I, I took too many, far too many weaknesses to be to be torn apart with uh, on my king side. I deserved sort of to be torn apart. <laughs> I really did. There were so many tactical opportunities. I I I, I created loads of opportunities. I, I I didn't even want to say it. Knight h6. You know, it was like Voldemort to say knight h6. I didn't even want to say he had knight h6. It's, it it looked terribly creaky the position <laughs> it, it, really did. it was creaking <laughs> the move that i couldn't say i couldn't even bring myself to say it that he had knight h6 at that point uh, and he, he did play okay just it's just luck that it's the positions i'm not getting checkmated or something Rook, rook. Okay. <laughs> this, this is a plan. This uh, move. Yep. He's got the e4 square. This is the big problem with this position. One of them, and he's got c5 on the cards as well. Try trying the bishop. If it was back on f8 or something. the bishops on f8 then yeah there's no g6 because of knight f6 that's for sure but he's nice knight and at least I'm trying to address this c5 issue bit by bit uh, bishop h3 is mostly pointless I think Yeah, I'll have difficulty having a plan here, I think. And then rook a6, bishop f5. Maybe the option just to eliminate that pesky knight to start off with. Actually, would it be so bad? Um, yes, bishop g5, f6, bishop f6. Maybe my king can't even be there. I just want to answer that with f6 without getting eliminated. With bishop f6. Is bishop g8 better than bishop g6? Or bishop e4, f5. Maybe bishop g6 is plausible. F five. It's getting hooks into light squares. Why don't I just take this pawn? That gives me B four and stops this whole B four plan. I'll just take this pawn. That's a weakness for the last move. It seems. It gives me the B four square. Bishop B four. I just noticed this forcing move could be used at any point. Bishop takes b4. Well, that's changed the picture a bit. So he is using the forcing. The thing is, no knight, no knight f7. Oh, it's just to win. I see. It's just to win b4. Okay, it's not you know it's weakening the light squares here. Maybe um, you know b six or f six, f six maybe f six, and then I don't know if b six 
is interesting. Probably with you know rook a5 to stop c5. Okay, this is against that strategic break and double as well. The other thing to look out for, not e4, knight e4, I suppose. I thought maybe e4, but I don't think e4 is on the cards really that easily. I think it's easier just to use the a file here. Let's use this a file. It's rook a1 here. Almost. Because it's mating on h1. But I don't know if he'd ever give me the opportunity to um, do that. I mean, may maybe it's a little tactic which is easy to miss this rook a1 and rook h1 mating. Um, maybe maybe it's easy to miss. Or not. B5. So I play, let's just test this. He plays rook b1, right? What do I do with rook b1, though? Rook a2? The other one? Can I not win a pawn? If he's going to move his queen, I can just take and then, I don't know, win a pawn. Is that Ruben Fine quotation I've been researching for, for an interesting Cora answer recently? I'd rather have a pawn than a finger, apparently, Ruben Fine. I don't know if it's actually true. Uh, chess history. Science got some stuff on that. Uh, he said apparently he'd rather have a pawn than a finger. And later on, I see, on um, on um, later there was this um, grandmaster who said like which pawn and which finger. And I don't know. Uh, okay, so b4 or queen c1. B4 queen c1. Queen c1 creates that pin. B four What about just C five for a moment? He's not really doing that much, is he? With that pin. Okay, that creaks that pawn chain a bit. D three coming up. D three, um, D three, C three, C three, C two, Queen F one, C one. Yes, that looks pretty convincing. C two and Queen F one, Queen takes F one, and then C one. Just it's about the C pawn now, right? Okay. Anyway, so um, okay, thanks. Uh, okay. Yon, oh, more diet cokes needed. Knight f6, castle and queen e8. See, it doesn't play bishop d3. It goes straight into e5 and e4, right? But he might not want to play bishop e2. 
and the whole thing about e5 is I weaken the whole diagonal, including c7. In fact, already there's a, probably a liability with c7. Uh, if I play a6, ugh, it's a horrible London system torture thing, isn't it? Torture rack. Ah, uh, uh, this brings back memories of losing with a5 in, in a game a few weeks back of the b5 square. So a6. Is that a relatively low downside move compared to the others? Uh, if my queen's on it, you know, that c7 is neglected. Anytime I play e5, e4, the whole diagonal's wide open for that London system torture, Bishop. Uh, okay. Maybe. Actually, if I can encourage e4, I'd rather encourage e4. You know, there was a Paul Carres against Fisher London system game I once video annotated. Fisher managed to get Paul Carres to play Carres to play e4 at some point. It's not happening here, is it? Is it? Because that would solve so many problems if White played e4. You know, I I just think f4 and d4 would be weaker if White played e4, but it's not going to happen, is it? It would give me a plan which doesn't involve the meltdown of my queen side. Okay, so quick queen e7 here. Now there's knight d5 takes, knight d8 d takes. What about knight e4? Is that knight e4? Oh, it's all horrible stuff, isn't it? E d. Maybe E D. Okay, this keeps the bishop blunted. I'm going to go for E D. Uh, uh, e D. Let's just keep this bishop blunted. I just hate this London system bishop. This is one of the, my top ten torches in chess. This H two London system bishop and everyone playing the London system. It's become one of my top ten <laughs> torches. <laughs> okay, so knight e4. Okay, anyway, <laughs> knight e4. Maybe I'm getting some play against d4. You know. <laughs> Knight d4 here. Okay, so knight d4 coming up now. D5. D is d5 plausible? All right, it looks a little bit better than earlier, anyway. Hmm. Take out this and then take out C four maybe. And take out C four. Oh, 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 I was a bit of controversy with Rook C one. Mm. Yeah. yeah, Rook C one, Queen A four, Rook C seven, and then that Bishop's activated on D six. Maybe you know Queen C six. There's Knight D four. There's not too many squares for this game. Maybe Queen D three. What about Queen D three? Hmm. Queen D three. Yeah. So he possesses that E file possession is important in football, especially sometimes. Well, Brazil. 
Bishop takes h3. There's rook e3. Uh, well, well, I just uh, no again the c7 issue. I just text c7, so that sort of makes preparation of a queen c4. Kick this guy out. Measurement of six. I think I can now take her and take her. Probably I can go back to base now. Try and challenge this E file. Okay, B six. T5 to stop. Okay, I'm liberating, <laughs> I'm liberating this bishop. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Things have a cost in life. Uh, that's for sure, isn't it? Oh, crikey. Okay. Um, D4 here. I've liberated the London system bishop. Take this guy. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, torture rack, London system. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Uh, right here. Oh, hi there. Okay. What is that? What is that? Wow. Okay. Uh, one elephant, uh, two elephants, three elephants, four elephants, five elephants, six elephants, seven elephants, um, eight elephants, uh, nine, nine elephants. Yep, up to nine now. Ten elephants. Okay, I'm gonna have to abort. Okay, it was good to pull the coat there. Probably a bit suspect actually. Well, I'm playing this. Uh, it's probably a little bit suspect. I thought I'd spice things up. I should have maybe played bishop a7. I don't really like this structure that much. This isn't very positional. Uh, anyway. It's sort of on the entertainment side, I think, this position. Maybe bishop e6 takes queen g5 for knight h3 for winning the queen. Okay, that queen's in trouble sometimes. It's not protected. So sometimes it's going to be in trouble because it's an unprotected piece, right? H5, H4. Isn't this fizzy? Wow. H5, H4. Actually, isn't that Bishop B3 as well? I'm trying to. Well, it has 
it has the perk of the queen not being protected. This is a forcing move which could be a total disaster for white. Is this rook moves knight h3? That forcing move, you could see it as a sort of, um, you know, downside of the opponent's possession. I think the the very existence of it is a sort of downside. I think. I think I can play knight h3 and bishop d1. Okay, so here. It's a shame the knight's not on. Uh, if the knight wasn't on e1, you know, bishop e2, bishop f3 would be checkmating. And I might have to recapture here. Oh well. I might have to recapture with what though? The knight? d6 is going to drop, and you know, rook d8, rook d3, maybe. Isn't it, is it about to lose that? Um, no, I think this D file is more worthwhile having a bit of pressure on the D file than losing G4. This isn't that convincing, is it? Oh, he wants to put my king in trouble as well. Yeah, that that was a daft. I think this is a bit daft by me actually. Why, why am I? Where's my king? Sort of getting exposed here on this f file. In fact, he's got d four. I think it's better with d four. Yeah. It's, all right, this knight g seven tactic. Oh, that's nice. Oh, things are getting a bit nasty here. <sighs> B5. Oh. Ah, this is getting nasty. I'm losing yet another pawn, aren't I? Oh, oh crikey. <clears throat> Here. Let's try and not lose every single pawn going. And he's got fifty. He's got fifty plus seconds on the clock, so this is looking like a dominant possession for White. Okay, I don't know if that does me favours or not. Oh, that certainly is a blunder, which I welcome in this lost possession. I'm pretty sure if we look at it with an engine, White is just clearly better now. Before this blunder, oh, slightly better, but great tactic there. This um, great tactical shot uh, there. Bishop takes. You know, just to put this on the board. If I do this, then there's knight g7 check. Great tactical shot. <sighs> oh, we've had this trap from last week. I don't know if any of you watched this session last week. Do you remember this trap? It's a bit slow, the G6 and Bishop G7. We had that last week. It's not something to do against the London system. Did I say London system? I mean the Morris Smith gamut. I mean the Smith, the Smith Morris gamut. There's no bishop check to win the queen back. Yeah, 
95, I it's like Chatmate, doesn't it? It's Chatmate. Yeah, it's, it's a trap. It's one of the Smith Morrow, you know, dark secret traps. You can play this. Yeah, it's a terrible trap, isn't it? Mm. Oh well. Uh, it's worth knowing not to fall into too many times. <clears throat> Hi, Julia. Oh. <laughs> Pardon me, I'm a bit gassy. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if you heard that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> dear, dear. I had too much Diet Coke. I haven't had anything to eat yet today either. I, it's it's terrible. Okay. Uh, D6, A6. Pardon me. Oh, that's foul. A6, Bishop A7. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I I don't know. I gravitate towards this this stuff. I don't know. Too much bullet chess. F five. <laughs> I'm I'm not claiming to be the positional expert. Yeah. So F five and Queen F six. I just I, I think this is sort of entertaining. I, it's the only thing I can say about it. It's, it's sort of mildly entertaining. Queen F six. Knight H four. Knight H4. I, I, I'm sometimes mildly entertained by it. I'm maybe I don't know. I never grew up in jazz. I didn't. I didn't follow all of Karpov's best games as I should have. Uh, okay. Uh, Queen Queen H4. Uh, Queen H4. If I just castle here or or something else. Hang on, this this is actually it looks as though you know I'm in trouble. I think I should castle because my king could be you know in severe danger. There's no there's no time uh, for Queen G3 it seems because he just takes take and then you know in that position I'm not really. Uh, he could just unpin um, f2 with uh, say knight c5 and then threaten f takes so uh, that's not working but here hasn't he just neglected it's a weakness of the last move I'd call it sort of neglected f2 knight takes f2 looks rather crushing here yeah. if queen d6 knight e4 check and then knight takes d6 yeah knight f2 looks a bit crushing to me I think I will play it I do have Karpov's best games. I do have books like that in my in my library. Honest. Uh, okay, so Bishop H three here uh, looks looks crushing. Well, oh, thanks. Okay. Uh, here we go. Uh, Tony McGee. Uh, Tony McGee, 33. That rhymes a bit, doesn't it? Tony McGee, 33. Play with me. Okay. Here we go. One elephant. Okay, no. D five knight e seven. Uh all right, we're playing like this. Alright, I, I like the quick D five gambit here for some reason. It's sort of worked out quite well for me this gambit. Mm. 
in recent bullet games overall statistically i think it's got some foundation to it i think <laughs> oh has it wait wait what do i do to that is it d takes 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 tank tank uh, i'm hoping this is okay because i'm hitting isn't this okay Yeah, free night. Or is it is it dangerous for me? Well, you know, it's um it's uh Well there's knight e five if I don't wanna lose the exchange. I mean bishop f five, knight f seven, key seven, yeah, knight takes, knight takes. Is um it's not just losing the exchange though, that it's losing f seven en route. But on the other hand, knight e5, there's bishop f4. This might actually be the way to play it. Because it is a kind of center pawn. Yeah. You know, I'm going to play it like this. I'm going to play it like this. So it's a pawn for the exchange. It's not that convincing at the moment, is it? Is it? It's not that convincing. King G6. Okay. Maybe I'll take with the pawn. That gives me bishop h6, tempo gainer. King g6. Well, I think I think bishop h6 is handy. No, I'm not sure now. This because any any if he has a rook on f one, I can't do knight f seven as he takes and then takes hair. All right, this is a well. At least I can do this for a moment. Can I bring the knight to e five if he takes on root? Okay, he takes on root. In fact, there's knight d six as well. Might be interesting. Maybe you know there's um. There's king e6 here because you know bishop g4, there's knight d5. I think king e6. Okay, there's knight d5, there's rook c8. I think king e6. If rook e1, e3. Well, there's knight d1 there. Okay. So, in other words, I don't want to. I need, I need rook e8. On rookie one, I, f I think King G six, Knight D five, King G six might be the best bet to give me the uh, possibility of rookie eight. If rookie one, because I think E three just plays Knight D one. Okay, yeah, that's that's a problem, isn't it? All right. Well, at least I think e3, you know, supported by this bishop. It's not very convincing. Ugh. Let's see. This um, e3 business, is it going to be tested now? Was that f5? Maybe. Maybe I should play f5. f5. And the king goes over here. Or well, not, king f6. Looks a bit dangerous. 
Yes, this F file looks a little bit dangerous, I have to say. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, maybe, maybe there's a sort of bridge there with bishop g6 anyway. Okay. Gives me king g7. Although there's rook d7, I've just created new downsides instead. It depends if they're not as painful or, or what. Uh, maybe rook c8 for a moment. Are these as painful, these downsides? Now there's knight d5 if he wants to pick up that pawn. Yeah, he can just pick up the c7 pawn tactically if he wanted. Well, it was there with rook c7 and knight d5 if he wanted. All right, so if I play e3 for a moment. Right. And here, I mean, maybe, you know, knight d1 is emerging. So rook f8 for rook f3, is that something? Knight d5, rook f3, knight c7, king e5, rook d5, king e4. I look forward to rook h3 there, at least. Is that, I mean, is that the best way to play it? Knight d5, is there rook, is that king e5? No, it's just king e5, carnivorous king. It plays rook d1, then there's e2. Just rule out this knight d5 business. In fact, haven't I got rook f2 now for, for c2? That looks like serious compensation. Well, it was anyway. Maybe it, maybe it was. As as mentioned, though, I think rook f3. Back to this rook f3 plan uh, for rook h3. But yeah, the knight's covering f2. That was an interesting opportunity to check out. Okay. He's, he hasn't got a tactic here. Yeah. Has he? If I just play this, h4, there's king takes g4. I don't want h4. That's why I thought this is interesting. Also, anyway, h6, h4 is like winning material. Well, here there's rook f1, bishop h5. There's, there is. Um, there is rook d3. Okay, I cash out with king h4, I think. This end game. I mean, I could just cash out immediately with king h4. Place the game. Uh, oh, okay, Dirk. This might be the last game today. Dirk, um, hi there. Go easy on me. Uh, I don't like these high state games. Too much pressure. Uh, this this last game. I'm, I'm. I think there's that graph of. Yeah, okay. Anyway, if it's a pet opening of, I was going to say this graph of energy and whatever accuracy is, is I think I'm generally at the low point here. But anyway, if I stick to a pet opening, uh, this might help. This is at least pet opening territory. I think that will tip. If you're tired in the tournament, at least try and stick to your pet openings. Uh, even if they're objectively terrible. If you know them more than the opponent, that helps. So, you know, you can celebrate what's terrible as long as you know it better than your opponent, I think. So, uh, d6, a6, uh, especially if, yeah, okay, d6, a6. Uh, yeah, I 
A6 and bishop A7. Okay. No, 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 because knight e4. <laughs> uh, I, I don't want, I don't want to go into that fork very much. Um, King's bishop. Keep this bishop, I mean, I want to keep this bishop on board. It pins that f2 pawn. And, um, Yeah. Although it's I keep saying, um, I did actually watch some videos recently about how to remove filler words. I've been trying to improve my uh <laughs> doing it again. It's very difficult to get rid of those filler words uh when thinking. Yeah. F five E four F five H four H five H four H G It looks like it might actually be working here this plan H four just Queen F six or F four No my king's in the centre I don't want to push my lap too much. Maybe bishop d7, king f8, king g7, rook g8, that sort of thing. King f8, king g... Yes, the h5 pawn is, is loose. King f8, king g7, rook e8. Uh, king g7 coming up. And then rookie eight. Okay, he's going for that c5 break. b6 seems a terrible thing to do in principle. I could just wait for c5 and pounce on it with bishop b5. If I just connect the rooks here and ready to pounce with bishop b5, is just something about that? Well, not really. F4 gives up the E4 square. Oh, I see. I've seen Magnus Colson do some sort of uh, H5 pawn sack. This rings a bell. In uh, a Sicilian Sveshnikov game. I'm going to try and emulate that. Uh, it was quite a quick win in a classical time control, wasn't it? I mean that pattern is nothing to do with this position, it's just the basic fundamental pattern. If I doubled rooks, then queen g5 and this mating. Uh so anyway, there's an h file here to play with. Uh if I just double rooks and queen g5. Any any f pawn move this bishop e3. It it has given me a bit of counterplay taking that pawn. I think on this h file. So double rooks, queen g5, rook h1. The other rook is, is checkmate. That game, I think, Karyakin against Carlson. Magnus sacks the h pawn. Actually, can I play queen g5 here anyway? Instead of recapturing. It's DC rook h4. Ah, oh. oh, that's ruined all the fun, hasn't it? Mind you, there's rook h4 here because I, I cover an escape square f3 with this knight. So actually, rook h4 is sort of working here, knight f6. I mean, I assume check. And then there's checkmate. And if rook h4, and then queen h4. And white seems defenseless, you know, rookie one, queen h1. Queen g2, queen h3. It looks like rook h4. There's no real defence. Uh, let's check this again. I mean, 
just in case you know, rook h4 knight takes check um checkmate mm -hmm. there's no real checks okay <clears throat> It was in the World Championship match after the classical time control. That game with the with the pawn sack, the H pawn what was it something else? Okay. So anyway, ah, uh, right. That that does sort of test things a little bit. That's a bit annoying, isn't it? Check. I start with check, or is there anything more? Clinical, maybe Queen G6. That's King F2. You know, I, I could actually start this off with Rook H2 because then if he took, then there's check and then check mating. Rook H2 actually means. No, I'm going to lose my Queen. What about just Queen G6? I was trying to be sane about it. Queen G6 actually hits E4. Queen G6 looks altogether a much better proposition, right? Queen G6. It looks less controversial, I would say, because it actually pins that guy anyway. It doesn't put loads of material at stake if I miscalculate. Does it? <laughs> Maybe it has. Um, uh, I think it has actually. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, Queen H4 is still dangerous looking. Uh, I think I have put material at stake. Yeah, I've done it. I've put material at stake. He just takes that Queen H4. That's probably defense with Rook F4. Although Queen G3, King F1, Rook H1. It might be tricky to find a defense there. Rook F2, Queen H1. All right, this is not testing too much my material loss. If I just played Queen E5 here, it's not such a bad position, I think. Right. Okay. I know I'm being a bit of a, a wuss there. Whatever a wuss is, I think I am. <clears throat> Underwind this structure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Ho hope you enjoyed this week. Okay. Um. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, keep safe. Yeah. See you next week. Okay. Thanks very much.